Hello, and I'm back delving once again into the mind-bending world of optical illusions. And today I'm going to be looking at three more illusions. So without any further ado, let's get going. Firstly, we have two circles. The one on the left looks red or orange, and the one on the right looks pink. So let's see what's really going on here. If I remove the stripes and the colour background, we can see that both circles are in fact the same shade of grey. But why does this illusion happen? Well, this is an example of colour constancy. This is the idea that our brains correct what they see in relation to the perceived colour of illumination. This allows us to see a red ball no matter what the illumination is. Our brains are constantly making compensations. This means that we perceive colour based on what's around it, and this gives our brain the framework that it needs to perform that correction. The narrow strips of colour fool our brain into thinking that the illumination is in fact coloured, and that fools us into thinking that these grey circles are also coloured. Our brain is trying to work out what colour they actually are. But why should there be different colours? This is simply to do with which colour is going over and which is below. We'll have a look at the right hand circle, and we see it as pink, because our eyes perceive the circle to be under blue illumination, and so our brain tries to remove some of that blue, and that leaves us with pink. Next up, we have an illusion called the Hermann Grid Illusion. We can see here a number of dark squares surrounded by a lighter colour, and as we look around it appears that there are dark spots at the intersections of the lighter coloured grid. Why do we see the dark spots though when they're not actually there? You may have noticed that the grey spots between the black squares don't really appear at the intersection that you're looking directly at, but they do appear at the intersections at the periphery of your vision. So firstly this is to do with visual acuity. The image produced when looking directly at an object is very sharp, because the light detecting cells in the part of the retina directly behind the pupil, and this is called the fovea, are very densely packed. Each light detecting cell has its own connection to the optic nerve, and the light detecting cells here in this part of the retina are called cones. In the periphery of the retina, the light detecting cells are called rods, and we have lots of rods connected to one neuron making up the optic nerve. As a result, the image produced by the rod cells is of a much lower resolution. That's only part of the story. The other part is something called lateral inhibition. Our brains try to increase the contrast in any image that they see as much as possible. More contrast gives us a sharper image, and this could be the difference between spotting something dangerous and missing it. Light hitting the rods in one part of the retina will actually inhibit the rods next to them, meaning that those will see a dark image. At these intersections there are actually four regions next to the middle where this lateral inhibition is happening. And so where these four regions overlap, and the maximum inhibition is occurring, the image looks a bit darker. And finally for today's illusions we can see a figure that's being chased by a monster through a tunnel. But which of the figures is bigger? It looks to us that the monster at the back of the tunnel is bigger, but if I then remove the tunnel, we can see that they're completely the same size. So why should we see them as different? This is an example of top-down processing. And this means that the image that our brains work out isn't just based on the light entering our eye, but it's actually built up using a, a set of rules that our brains know. And our brains know that an object that's further away appears smaller than the same object would if it was closer to us. The tunnel makes it look like the monster is further away, and so our brains interpret that as being that the monster is actually bigger than it really is. Our brains develop our perception of the world based not just on the light entering our eyes, but also context and its own set of rules. So that's it for today, there will be more optical illusions coming, but until then, thank you for watching.